the Prime Minister's comments this week on the war in the Middle East and the strong reaction to them. Have a listen to what he said. I urge the government of Israel to exercise maximum restraint. The world is witnessing this, the killing of women and children, of babies. This has to stop. Those comments drew backlash from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who tagged the Prime Minister on X, writing, Israel isn't the one, quote, deliberately targeting civilians, but Hamas that beheaded, burned, and massacred civilians in the worst horrors perpetrated on Jews since the Holocaust. To be fair, Even Prime Minister Trudeau did also condemn Hamas moved. in his remarks just after urging All Israel to use restraint. So far, the feds have resisted pressure from opposition parties to call for a ceasefire. They are, though, pushing for humanitarian pauses to allow aid into Gaza. Let's get some more perspective now on Canada's position when it comes to this war from National Defence Minister Bill Blair. Hi, Minister. Good to have you back on the program. Thank you so much for making the time. Of course, Vashi. Thanks for having me. I want to start off, Minister, with the uh, Israel-Hamas war and in particular comments from the Prime Minister this week uh, urging Israel to exercise, quote-unquote, maximum restraints. restraint. Pardon me. Are Canadians to infer that your government at this point believes Israel is not exercising maximum restraint? No, I, I, I think that's the wrong inference to draw from the Prime Minister's remarks. The Prime Minister, quite understandably, is, is concerned about innocent lives, innocent lives on both sides of that border. And, and you know, we, we've heard very clearly a Canadian's concern. Our government's con concern for that humanitarian aid get to those people who need it. And, and there, there are international rules with respect to the, the law of armed conflict. Um, we have every expectation that, that Israel will um, res respect those rules. And, and, but, and, but we've also been crystal clear. Israel has the right to defend itself. They were attacked by a terrorist organization. And, and, and they have a right to exist and therefore a right to, to defend themselves. Uh, are just, uh, the Prime Minister was simply reiterating our expectation, as I think all nations uh, would agree, that the international rules order on how uh, these conflicts um, will be conducted is, is important as well, and, and we were just restating that, po that position. But actually, he, he, he didn't restate it in the exact same language. He has had that position previously in which he did outline that the uh, rules of international law needed to be followed. In this case, though, he detailed uh, what was happening in hospitals. He detailed concerns over uh, civilians. And then he said, I urge Israel to exercise maximum restraint. Why would he say that if he already believed that was happening? Well, well, well again, Vashi, I, I think the, the Prime Minister was simply reiterating Canada's long-held position that, that we, we believe unequivocally that Israel has a right to defend itself. They, they were the victim of a horrendous uh, terrorist attack, and we, we've also called upon called upon Hamas to release the hostages that they are holding, and th our expectation is uh, for Israel that, that it, as they defend themselves and engage uh, in that conflict, that, that they will do everything that is necessary to avoid you know a humanitarian crisis and and the the injury to innocence. Uh, that's I think that's the world's expectation. Are, are you? Um Telling Canadians then that the reaction, for example, from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his chief political rival, the leader of the opposition, Yair Lapid, was not warranted because both of them appeared to, on social media, take offense to what the Prime Minister said. They both rebuked those comments. Well, and, and if I may be clear, I, I read very carefully the, the Prime Minister's uh, res response to, to Prime Minister Trudeau. Um, he also, I think, was providing assurances that, that they were uh, undertaking um, the, 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 their part of this conflict in a way which they believe to be responsible and in accordance with the laws of armed conflict. Um, I, 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 I did not take that as rebuke. They did, though, outline in both their comments that they, their perspective is Hamas is ultimately responsible for what has occurred and what continues to incur and it appears that they believe the prime minister's statement said otherwise is it your government's belief that hamas is ultimately responsible for what is unfolding in the middle east i, I believe that hamas committed a horrendous terrorist act um, I, I believe that that terrorist threat has to be properly addressed and eliminated i believe that the, the israel has a right to defend itself 
And I also believe that Israel understands that in the defending itself, it also has a responsibility to conduct that armed conflict in accordance with international rules. I think the, the Prime Minister Netanyahu acknowledged that. And, and Canada's position, again, is, you know, we are concerned and we express concern for the innocent civilians that are caught in this conflict. And at the same time, we, we, we also acknowledge Hamas is a terrorist organization that committed a terrible, a terrible crime and Israel has every right to defend itself. And just to be clear, Minister, for, for Canadians watching, does your government believe Israel is exercising maximum restraint right now? Yes or no? Well, and, and again, I, I, think I, I think it's a mistake to engage in speculation or hypotheticals in the absence of evidence. And, and one of the things I, I do understand about the laws of armed conflict is, is that we, it, quite often in, in the fog of war, we don't have all of that information. And so the, the Prime Minister simply reiterated our position to encourage the, the, the Israel in, 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 in that dealing with that conflict that, that they would be, be mindful of the impact it's having on, on innocent civilians. I believe they are. And, and, and so that, that's simply the, the position that we were stating. So you have not arrived at a conclusion one way or the other about whether or not Israel is conducting itself with an appropriate amount of restraint? Well, I, I can tell you, I'm not going to engage in speculation or, or, or in hypotheticals. You know, we have a certain amount of information available to us and, and we are hearing that, you know, there are innocent civilians who are being impacted in this conflict and, and Canada has already expressed its, its strong uh, opinion that we want to get humanitarian aid who, to those who desperately need it. And at the same time, I'm not going to, to, to pass judgment on the, on the contact, conduct of this conflict because we simply don't have enough information to make that determination. There are a number of Canadians, including two opposition parties, who are watching the same things unfold as your government and calling on your government instead to call for a ceasefire. The uh, Prime Minister was asked about that. He did not offer a specific response about why he's called for what he has, but stopped short of a ceasefire. Why is your government at this moment in time against a call for a ceasefire? Well, well clearly, we, we've said that from the very outset, in, in the, in, on October 7th, when Hamas attacked and murdered 1,200 Israelis and, and kidnapped uh, over 200 people and, and, and dragged them back in, into Gaza, that Israel had a right to defend itself and, and we have said fruits in the outfit that that defense should be conducted in accordance with the laws of armed conflict, international law, and a respect for humanitarian concerns. And, 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 and so that has been the position that we've articulated. Just finally on this topic, Minister, can you clarify what exactly your expectation or hope uh, from the government's perspective is as to how long those pauses should be? Uh, I hear the Prime Minister use the word sustained at, at certain points. There are pauses. Uh, most likely every day there have been longer ones to allow for foreign nationals out. Are you looking for a multi-day pause or something different? Well, again, we're, we're looking for a pause that will be sufficient to allow aid to reach those who desperately need it. And that's the work that we have been working with but with our allies and our partners across the region. It's, well, it, 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 it means that, it, that it's very difficult to get humanitarian aid, move food, medicine, and other essential supplies to those people who need it. Uh, when, when there is open hostility taking place. And so a pause sufficient to allow those, those supplies to reach those people and, and to respond to a, a, a true humanitarian crisis, we, we believe is important. And that's what the Prime Minister has been calling upon. But, that, but you that can't a, quantify a pause it? pause I mean, sufficient and sustained in order to let that, uh, let that aid reach those people. But again, I don't know necessarily what that means, what that entails. The President of the United States has asked for a three-day pause. He has confirmed that information. Is your government asking for something along the same lines? Yeah, and, and, and Vashi, I, I'm not in, in a position to, to say how long that pause needs to be. We just want to make sure that, that humanitarian aid reaches the people who desperately need it. We've made a significant contribution as a country to that aid. Uh, we're, we want to make sure that, that we can get it into those people safely. And, and so however long the, the hostilities would have to be paused in order to, to give that effect um, I, I, is, is something that we support but I don't have a precise time uh, to recommend or, or, to, or to acknowledge to you. Minister, I'll leave it there. Appreciate your time as always. Thank you.